evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Let's give God some praise for being in his presence one more time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your Lord. Lord. God, Thank you for your name. All day long, oh, we just thanks. give you all the praise, yes, yes, all yes, the glory, yes. and all the honor. Yes. Amen. 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 We're going to come now with our scripture. We're going to be reading Psalm 61, <coughs> verses 1 through 8. Oh God, listen to my cry. Hear my prayer from the ends of the earth. I cry to you for help. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the towering rock of safety. For you are my safe refuge, a fortress where my enemies cannot reach me. Mm -hmm. Let me live Amen. forever in your sanctuary, safe beneath the shelter of your wings. Yes, Lord. For Amen. you have heard my vows, O oh God. You have given me an inheritance reserved for those who fear your name. Add many years to the life of the king. May his years span the generations. May he reign under God's protection forever. May your failing love and faithfulness watch over him. Then I will sing praises to your name forever as I fulfill my vows each day. Amen. 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 We have read Psalm 61 verses 1 through 8. Amen. 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 I'm going to bow in a word of prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to see this day, Lord. Thank you for another day that you have created, Lord, and out of, out of us to see. Lord, just thank you for your many blessings that you've thrown upon us, Lord. Continue to bless our bishop, Lord, as he brings our word on tonight, Lord. Continue just to teach him so he can teach us. Teach us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen, everybody. Amen. Amen again. Amen. Amen one more time for the Amen. Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. God is indeed good, right? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. 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 Never fail. Never fail. I just spent two hours right. teaching the emotional aspects of our finances. To a lively group of ladies. <laughs> Amen. So, what I could have done in an hour and a half took me all the two hours. It was very good. Amen. All right, my nephew Pop watching. How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Want to see your face in the place one day. I tell you, the biggest thing I learned was. Um, <laughs> Y'all excuse me. I, I had shut it up, but then I turned it back on. Um, I'll have to call her back after Bible study. Amen. 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 But um, the biggest thing I learned is um, it's worse than I thought, Deaconess. Yes, Concerning is. men and women mm -hmm. today. <laughs> It was about 15 ladies in the room and some on um, virtual. Mm -hmm. I knew it was bad. <laughs> you didn't know it was that bad, huh, did you? <sighs> the men are gone. <laughs> They're gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you deep man. You know that's what's sad. Um, I'm afraid that when my generation leaves here, 
Mm -hmm. As they say, in a world of trouble. But you know what, though? That's why you got to point them. Ladies, it's y'all fault too. Because mm -hmm. y'all enable them. Y'all baby them. Y'all take care of them. I don't know anything. I ain't say, I'm saying y'all. I know, I know, I know what you're saying. Yes, sir. I know what you're saying. Generally speaking. Generally speaking, yeah. yes. Because yes. all of them there, and I'm like, mm -hmm. they can't do that if y'all don't let them. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. That is true. They ain't never got nowhere for y'all to come stay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 and, if, and if they do, you probably don't want to go stay there anyway. And I and I say this: if he can't take care of himself, how he gonna take, take care, care of you? you amen. So my whole thing is this: if he's staying with his mama, <laughs> staying with his sister, and he come to you and got to move in with you. He wasn't taking care of where he was. How you gonna come in there and take care of anything? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they be running around the house like, I, uh, uh, I cooked. <laughs> Why are you cooking in your own place? Why are you gonna come over here cooking? <laughs> if you want to cook so much, go get you a restaurant job and go cook there and get paid. Go get paid is good. Yeah, I know, right? Go get paid, period, right? <laughs> But I'm, I didn't know it was that bad even then. No, no, it was bad. I yeah. knew it, but to see it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it's our fault. And it's black and white. Mm -hmm. It ain't just mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, Dick, you said it's the OGs too, right? They feel them they, 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 I mean, they just, they're having kids and they ain't doing nothing. To, uh, oh, yeah, if you can't do something financially, at least you can be there present, be, be present and teach them something. I mean, you know, <laughs> you just ain't doing nothing. We don't know what OG means yeah, for us. We not not street street deep, deep, what is OG? I've heard it, but I don't know what it means. <laughs> original, original, original gangster. gangster. It's one of the movies called them old head. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Deacon Lorenzo, you got the phone from the back? No. No, but there's something going on with it. Okay, something going on with it. That great one. Um, so y'all, 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 y'all see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Evangelist Smith, God bless you for joining us this evening. Um, it's heartbreaking to find out that the men are gone. They're gone. <laughs> it's the OG's fault or the old head's fault for not teaching the boys and the girls yeah. nothing. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's the knucklehead's fault for thinking yeah, somebody yeah. got to take care take of you. Care of them, yeah. And it's y'all fault, ladies. Y'all let him move in with you with no job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Left at Bomba's house straight to your house, and you think they're gonna be the man of the house. Then they already and just cause they got a pair, they think they 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 supposed to be the man. Mm -hmm. All that means is you got a pair. Mm -hmm. That don't mean nothing else. That's it. <laughs> so, fellas. Step up and be responsible. Mm -hmm. Ladies, if he ain't, leave him where he at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the one place they won't go to is church. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Can't raise a man. No. <laughs> they won't come around me because I, I hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. They don't want that. They want to come to y'all and sweet talk y'all and... <clears throat> You know, run them the mind games on y'all, and you know I love you. Lions, <laughs> they don't love you; they love themselves. Mm -hmm. And y'all gonna feed them, y'all gonna take care of them, y'all let them move in, and y'all carrying the load. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can we go to Bible study now? Yes, yes, sir. Y'all know I'm right. Oh yeah, you right. right. Digger Lorenzo, yes, sir. Paul Americano. Oh, you, you I already do with you. And you know what? You have grown, brother. Yes, he has. Mm -hmm. yes. You lot. have grown. 
You wouldn't be walking Deacon Lorenzo if you would. <laughs> you have grown, brother. You have grown. But be careful, like I always tell you. Because they want you back. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. You don't like to let go. Ladies, y'all can do bad by yourself. Yeah, hey, um, man, I don't, that's my model, that's right, that's right. Y'all sure understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It would be nice for y'all to have a fella. Yeah. It would be nice. But if he ain't responsible, leave him where he mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And don't let him put that old sob story on you and make, make you feel sorry for him. He's, he's grown. You mm -hmm. nobody like me. You <laughs> <laughs> Oh, girl, don't You understand what I'm saying? And some girl fall for that foolishness. Mm -hmm. Somebody gonna fall for it. My thing is this here. I got my own place. I can bring somebody there. Okay. I ain't got to move in with you. If your place better than mine, okay, I can deal with that. <laughs> but my name going on that wherever it is I'm staying at. Right. Why would I do that? Not just because I need my name on it, but because that means I got responsibility here. That's what that means. Yeah, exactly. oh, Lord. Yeah. I'm gonna take some responsibility here. Go to the police and kick me out. Both of us. <laughs> <laughs> and, and get mad at me. Want you want to? And, and I ain't gonna sleep on the couch, but for so long. But for so long. <laughs> but you mad at me? You go out there on it. I ain't going on no <laughs> sofa. You the one mad? I'm fine. And <laughs> 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 I don't care. Go go put my pillow in the blanket. Oh, and that must be for you because okay. that ain't mine. I, I ain't sleeping out right here. <laughs> you mad at me? You go out here. Go in another room if you got two or three. I'm just saying. I know what you mean. Yeah. If you that bad, I got to sleep out there. What, 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 what I did that bad? Well, mm -hmm. you can't talk to me now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Should we be married? <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and what I said, the, the, this generation. The biggest commitment they make is one to get my name tattooed on you. Or your name tattooed on you. Oh, I didn't know me. that. Yeah, it's a tattoo oh, now. Oh, Lord. In place of wedding ring. Right, you know, so you get a tattoo. Just, just and and, that, and the crazy. second commitment is, um, and a lot of ladies say this, let's live together. Mm -hmm. That's the commitment today. Mm -hmm. And they do it in a month. Yeah, yeah, they do it. And then they live Ooh. together for a long time. Long and then, time. And then they break up. Don't mm -hmm. even get married. After four, five kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. A tattoo ain't gonna help you legally to get to take care of kids when you don't. Okay. Oh. Oh, Lord. Y'all understand what Ooh. I'm saying. Yeah, we understand. <laughs> That's what's going on, like this is saying the world. All right, okay. Evangelist Smith, I had to take about 15 minutes, mm -hmm. if you still on there, to kind of talk current events and my nephew pop. Um, and all of that and now we got Sister Green on God bless you girl you know I love you um, amen so y'all I'm sorry y'all I've brought up in a different era okay and I feel that like once we gone and it's y'all fault lady because y'all let them get away with it I mean come on man there ain't that much babying in the world and they be crying and stuff there y'all feel sorry for them and y'all mad y'all know y'all don't like them <laughs> but y'all won't get rid of them. Y'all know y'all don't like them jokers. I know how. <laughs> See, you from that school. Yeah, like you said. I know about that. Y'all don't tell me. Y'all, y'all tell me. Y'all, y'all like them. them, them no, I don't like them. No deadbeat man. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't like them men that hang around right the house. They ain't mm -hmm. working. You Some working. women do, but no, they, they, don't like they don't like them. You got to get out. Of they don't like them. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. And and uh, yeah, you know, them. but do but like you my, keep them. Do like my friend did. Uh, her son. Uh, just, just you know, different things. But you know, she just like us. And he didn't want to uh, work. He was like sixteen. She had to be to work at six o'clock when she went out that door. You going? He had, he, he had to go out that door. Yeah. She said he ain't gonna sit you ain't sitting up in here in the air conditioning while she out there working. Waking up ten, eleven o'clock uh, in the morning, then shoot. play video game, mm -hmm. eat up all the food in the house, mm -hmm. suck it up all that. Get up there. I ain't talking about nobody in here, but mm -hmm. y'all 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 know it. I was oh, in the I room know. just now with fifteen mm -hmm. ladies, mm -hmm. and I started talking about some stuff, and I was like, wow, that's them. Mm -hmm. 
They all so, had similar experiences, didn't they? Yeah, Miss Audrey said, you just left and ain't said nothing to mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. So I'm telling you, I, I delivered the message. Okay. All right, y'all. Maybe if we read our Bibles, fellas, hmm. we wouldn't be in this position. Because Genesis 3 is speaking now, yeah. mm -hmm. where Genesis 2, Adam was given responsibility. Genesis 3, he gave it up for a piece of fruit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's still expecting y'all to get it to him. Mm -hmm. Even to the point where he was so irresponsible, he watched her eat something that he knows no was going to kill her. Shit. And he sat there and looked at her and eat it to see if she would die. When she didn't, oh, okay, get him. Mm. That's what happened. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly, exactly, what, exactly happened. what happened. And we still watching y'all to see if they gonna die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, y'all, I can eat it. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. Yes, exactly what happened. It's funny though, ain't it, Caleb? But it's true. Yeah, yeah exactly. Y'all don't let them jokers get away with it. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. The man Makai. All right, so we are on the second part of how to study the Bible. Amen. Amen. So how to study the Bible part two. Part one was all about observation, discover what it says or discover what he says. So part two is interpretation. We need to discover, now that we know what he said, now we need to discover what it means or what the Bible means or what God means. All right, so you cannot go to interpretation without observation. Praise God, somebody. Mm -hmm. So, um, part one of part two is this. The search for meaning. The search for meaning. When you have done your observations, as laid out in part one, you have done your homework. Amen. Amen. Now we will learn what we call the discipline of interpretation. And that's the point we're at now. You know what the book you are studying says, but you will have questions because you still don't know what certain things mean. Amen. And you want a correct analysis. You want truth, nothing less. You want to handle God's word accurately. You want to please God to have his approval for your stewardship of his word. Plus, you know that if you're going to live the way it should be lived, it has to be lived in truth. Praise the Lord. Tell Robert I miss him here tonight. Yeah, he said uh, to tell you that uh, he is reading the Bible. Uh, okay, I know he's reading it, but I want him in the building. <laughs> Amen. So how does a child of God go about making sure that he or she really knows what the word means? Word capital W means the word. Come on, somebody. Amen. Well, as we have already said, you have done the essential observation. And now you build from there. Amen. Amen. Let's look at some basic principles to follow when you interpret the Word of God. Then we'll follow those principles with specific instructions on how to better understand and analyze the text through word studies, understanding figures of speech, which is one of my favorites, and handling them properly, knowing how to deal with prophetic passages, etc. All these will help you, so to speak, examine the soil of God's word. So first, let's look at seven basic <coughs> principles which will help you interpret the Bible accurately. So we're going to go through seven basic principles. Praise the Lord. Uh, Deacon S. Levon, it is good to have good you to be back here. in Bible yes, study. It's good to be back in Bible study in person. Amen. Amen. We know we're on daylight savings time yeah. when Deacon S. Levon is in the building. Praise God. Yes, she's always present, you know, but she's in the building. Yes, Amen. Amen. And, and God bless Amen. you all on conference call this evening and all of you all who are watching via live stream. All right. Y'all ready for these seven principles? Yes, sir. There's some good stuff in here. 
So now we will, uh, the last part of part one, it wasn't a lot of Bible verses we hit, but then I came up with some, but we will hit more as we go. Principle number one. We got to go right back to um, uh, part one observation. And the biggest learning we got from part one is that context, context rules. rules. Amen. So remember you all that context rules. I love my niece Kayla. Um, she is very smart. Yes. I'm so proud of you for that. And um, it freaked me out. I saw one of her drawings. I'm like, good God, this girl good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you read, she's in her Bible yes. uh -huh. seriously. And therefore, she got a lot of questions. So if y'all can't answer them, y'all just need to come get me because she's going to ask you some <laughs> stuff that's going to push you to the limit of your knowledge of the Bible mm -hmm. because that's she wants to know, know something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, and y'all know, you ask a question when you got some information, I got that. But it's one more thing that is going to help me understand this. Mm -hmm. And that's when she's going to come and she's going to ask y'all, so y'all in the building, I'm telling you, y'all on the phone. <laughs> if, if, if she comes and she starts and you can't answer, don't fluff it. Okay. <laughs> Just tell her, you know what, we need to go to Bishop with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. And I ain't failed you yet. You know, I'm going to answer it. And that don't mean I know everything. That means mm -hmm. I study hard. I, you know, and I'm following. Y'all, listen, what I'm telling you all is, is that I follow what I'm teaching you all. Mm -hmm. It's what that means. And I've been teaching this for years, and I do it every year for this reason. If one new person comes to the church, it gives me reason to teach it again. Mm -hmm. You all been here for years getting up under it. Don't y'all get something new every time? Mm -hmm. Every time. Every time. Because it's different every time. How many times you been here, LP? About three? Two, three? Something like that. It's three. I, f I thought it, it's always different. Dang, you was here before we moved the building around. It's a long time. Amen. Oh, Deacon Ball was here in the first apartment complex. Him and his mom. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. So um, all of you, 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 you all have been here for a minute, and it, and it comes. How many for you? This is third or fourth. Yeah. You came just before LP did. Mm -hmm. Amen. So remember, y'all, that context rule. So, Kayla, as you're reading, that's what you got to do. Make sure you get it in context. Mm -hmm. That'll clear up a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, so which means you have to do your homework and go back mm -hmm. and read a little bit further and then yeah. go forward a little bit. Yeah. Um, let me get, get, um, Minister Andre, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do again. Last week I preached about 40 something verses. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it again. Okay. This thing. Okay. Okay. And it's a good one. It's a good one. And I'm looking at like, just like the Pharisees back in the day, we do the same stuff. We can't see what's right in front of us. You coming from John? Yeah. You can't see what's in front. Right, it's right there. How would you all feel? And I know I don't cross the fence. I'll come back. Y'all, can y'all hang with me for a minute? If, if Jesus sat right next to us right now mm -hmm. and he broke one of our traditions, okay. we will be asking God himself, <laughs> Why you, Why do you, do you can't do that. <laughs> Why did you do that? I would just ask him why he did it. I wouldn't tell him why he, he Our did Our it. doctrine says... Him. Right. That yeah. you can't put a cup on the communion table. <laughs> but what's on the communion table is do this in remembrance of me. Who is me? It's the man you questioned him. Amen. 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 So, y'all with me? Y'all with me? So, principle one remember that context rule. By now, you're familiar with context. You know the word context means that which goes with the text. When you interpret anything, anything, y'all, 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 anything, 
So um, talking to these ladies today, and we're talking about these men. Boy, it's a whole bunch of out of context going on with them. Mm -hmm. I don't know what part of um, being a man in the house you don't get. It ain't what you think it is. It certainly ain't occupying space up in there like you. Hmm. Something out of context. So when you interpret anything, a word, a verse, a teaching, it must always be considered in light of the surrounding verses and chapters, the book in which it is found, the entire word of God. Praise the Lord. Therefore, as you seek to know what something means, ask yourself, is my interpretation of a particular section of scripture consistent with the theme, with the purpose, and structure of the book in which it is found? And if it is not, you, you, you probably out of context. Is my interpretation consistent with other scriptures about the same subject? Or is there a glaring difference? When talking with Deacon Ball as he taught Bible study last week, he was telling me I had some cross references to back up what I say, but I didn't hit them. That was because he didn't need to. Mm -hmm. The verses itself spoke on it. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I hate I miss meeting with you today. You know what I'm saying? So, but one day this week, let's go out. I would have an occasional burger, but we can go get something. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So, um, so is my interpretation consistent with other scriptures about the same subject, subject, or is there a glaring difference? Amen. And I'm quite sure as he was standing here last week, if he needed to hit that cross-reference, if it hit it, he would have. It would automatically happen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So am I considering the historical and cultural context of what is being said? And I've had a whole bunch of uh, spiritual or uh, church men who take some scriptures totally out of it, it uh, um, not considering the historical or the cultural context of that text they're trying to cram down your throat. Hmm. So everybody likes to go to Timothy. So let us go to 2 Timothy and see what this scripture says about I opened up the first Timothy. Ooh, hot dog, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> ah, glory. <laughs> Y'all know that's a joke, right? <laughs> How some people do that. They be like, ah, oh, open up the Bible. And it was right there. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 16. 16. And of course, you all know we may have to get some context to it, but we may can just read what it says. Now, we can just read this one. Mm -hmm. Let's read it first and see if we want to go get some context. So, we're talking about context rules, right? Mm -hmm. Look what verse 16 says. Y'all ready for this? Y'all got your Bibles open to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 16. Conference call, y'all got it there? Sister, Mother Larry, I know you're there. You got it? Um, y'all ready? From the New Living Translation. Watch what it says, y'all. Watch this, watch this. Sister Green, Evangelist Smith, my nephew Pop, I don't know if y'all still watching, but watch this. Avoid worthless, foolish talk that mm. only leads to more godless behavior. Mm. Mm. What are y'all arguing with people for biblically mm -hmm. when you don't agree? It's a reason why. Mm -hmm. You can't tell somebody nothing that knows everything. Mm. You ain't gonna convince them. Mm -hmm. What you arguing with them for? Why? Because you the one that's gonna look like a fool. Mm -hmm. Amen. Can I read it again? Avoid worthless, foolish talk that only leads to more godless behavior. Now, this is Paul telling Timothy, man, don't be debating with them jokers. They don't believe what you believe anyway. Mm -hmm. If that's what you want to believe, I'm going to let you have it. Amen, y'all. Mm -hmm. So, never take scripture out of its context to make it say something that is contrary to the text. Just because you're trying to make it say what you want it to say. Which is why we had part one with all about observation, discover what it says. Not what you think it says. So even if you might say what be considered a blessing to that person, 
always handle the word objectively, then subjective blessings will be, ba will be based on truth, not error. Discover what the author is saying. Remember that the ultimate author is God and do not add to his meaning. One of my favorite things I like to do when I get to this point is I'm going to invite you all to the pots and pans portion of the Bible. Why do I call it the pots and pans? Because we don't go there often. It's them pots that's way up under there, you know. <laughs> now listen, y'all. In y'all's house, you got your favorite pots. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. And you got your favorite pans. Mm -hmm. And they right up front. Yep. Mm -hmm. The mother was oh, in yeah. the back for a reason. <laughs> you don't want to mess with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. So that's why I call some of those prophets the pots and pans portion. Because we'll never go there. Hmm. So can we have some fun tonight? Mm -hmm. Go to Hosea. Y'all know we'll read Hosea, you know, but the good thing about it is once we get past chapter two, I won't read no more. Because the first part of God told him, go, 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 go get that prostitute and marry her. Hosea was like, you crazy God. <laughs> I ain't going to do that. Then he fell in love with her. Hosea chapter five. No, I'm sorry. Not Hosea. Amos. I'm sorry, y'all. If we ain't reading Hosea, Hosea is fun. We, we like to read about that, but we ain't reading Amos. Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5. Amos. Amos. <laughs> I'm sure I have. In passing. Y'all ain't reading Habakkuk. We don't even say it right. We talking about Habakkuk. Chapter what now? 5. I said Habakkuk. Where they, the lady coming. It's Habakkuk. And said it like, I was like, Oh, you just wrong. It's Habakkuk. Mm -hmm. No, it ain't. It's Habakkuk. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, y'all. Oh, I can't find it. You can't find it? Mm -hmm. Your um, dictionary doesn't show you Amos? Yeah, the um, table of contents after ah. Joel. Yeah, that's what I meant, table of contents. Okay. Right before Obadiah. Y'all, I'm going to show y'all something. I was flipping through, and the pages were stuck together, which means I ain't been going there. Mm -hmm. I ain't needed to. You know what I'm saying? But Amos, I mean, what's before Amos, y'all? Joel. Joel. Joel, Amos, and, and what did I say? Obadiah. 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 Amos chapter 5. Y'all going with me? Yeah. Amos chapter 5. All right. Verse 14. We're going to have a little fun just to show you all how important context is. Before I go to principle two, we're going to close with this. This is a freebie. Amos chapter 5, verse 14. You way in the back. If I see words of red, Sister Ann, you way in the New Testament. We're in the Old Testament. Um, in between, um, no, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, you got it. <laughs> we'll have you find it. If you see Obadiah, you close. I think she said she, she got, got it. You got it? Uh -huh. Okay, sorry. My bad. <laughs> My bad. So it's like chapter. Chapter 5. Verse, verse 14. Y'all ready? So I got a question. When I read this, y'all tell me. Now, if y'all know this, because some of y'all took this before, don't say nothing. All right? If I hit it, uh, when I read it, y'all tell me, is it a Bible verse of encouragement or rebuke? Amen, y'all? All right, here we go. Do what is good and run from evil so that you may live. Then the Lord of God's the Lord God of heaven's armies will be your helper just as you have claimed. If you know the answer, don't answer it. But if you don't know and you hit it right, that's good. So, but if you know, don't say anything. Don't spoil it for those that don't know. So I'm going to read it one more time. All right. Do what is good and run from evil so that you may live. Then the Lord God of heaven's armies will be your helper just as you have claimed. Is it a verse of encouragement 
or a verse of rebuke. You know it. Don't 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 answer it if you know it. Just say yes or no. I think I do. Okay, you I know. I think it. I do. You don't know it because you ain't never took this. I think it's, I think I know. What is the answer? I think it's um. Hey, Pastor Sewells. Um, <laughs> Sewell. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I saw Pastor Charmita and I was like, I'm always so glad to see her. Right? You know, seriously, Pastor, we need to talk. Seriously, I'm like, hey, man. She probably mad at me because I ain't called her nothing. But you know what? You pick up that phone and you call, call me. So, uh, <laughs> but we need to talk. No, I'm so glad to see you. So, okay, Kayla, what what is it? Is it a verse of encouragement or a curse? A, a verse, Lord, help me, Jesus, or a verse <laughs> of rebuke? I think, I think, I think it's a. I would say rebuke. I think. You think it's rebuke? Yeah. But, Good. But it's, okay. It's, but it's kind of. That's why I that's picked this verse. Yeah. What you think? I think it's encouragement. You think it's encouragement. Perfect answer. Anybody else? It Anybody it else? What do you think? I think it's encouragement. And you think it's encouragement. encouragement. Anybody else? Anybody else? We good? <laughs> you think it's rebuke, Deacon Ball says. Well, besides me telling you, I ain't don't even look at me because I ain't gonna call you. <laughs> Talk about Minister Williams. Mm -hmm. So instead of me telling you all, you all tell me once we get it in context. Okay. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go to what verse, uh, Sister Kayla? Fourteen, right? Yeah. Uh, to get it in context, what verse should we know? Who ooh, should we go to? Um, Diga Ball, you said. One, one. He said verse one. one. What do you say, Sister Kayla? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Pastor uh, Charmita, it is Amos chapter 5, verse 14. She asked um, um, what verse we are on. Amos chapter 5, verse 14. So, um, and what we're going to do to get it, and the question was, Pastor, was um, uh, Amos chapter 5, verse 14, is it a verse of encouragement or a verse of rebuke? So we had some that said encouragement and some that said rebuke. So you come up with your own and we're going to start in verse 1 so that we can find out exactly what this verse is. And here's why I say that. No, let's, let us read it first and then I'll say why we need to, why uh, context is so important. Mm -hmm. Amen. So let's go to verse 1. And we're just going to read up to 14. All right? Mm-hmm. Listen, you people of Israel. Listen to this. What does it say? Funeral song. Funeral song. I am singing. So Amos started singing to him. So everything leading up to verse 18 is a part of the song. Y'all got me? All right. So. Listen, you people of Israel. Listen to this funeral song I am singing. The virgin Israel has fallen, never to rise again. She lies abandoned on the ground with no one to help her up. The sovereign Lord says when a city sends a thousand men to battle, only a hundred will return. Wow. When a town sends a hundred, only ten will come back. Wow. Now this is what the Lord says to the family of Israel. Come back to me and live. I don't know if uh, up to verse 3 is the end of the song. I don't know unless he got some more verses coming up in, ver in chapter, verse 5. Now, this is what the Lord says to the family of Israel. Come back to me and live. Don't worship at pagan altars at Bethel. Don't go to the shrines at Gilgal or Be Beersheba. For the people of Gilgal will be dragged off into exile and the people of Bethel will be reduced to nothing. Mm -hmm. Come back to the Lord and live. Otherwise, he will roar through Israel like a fire, devouring you completely. Your gods in Bethel won't be able to quench the flames. You twist justice, making it a bitter pill for the oppressed. You treat the righteous like dirt. It is the Lord who created the stars, the Pleiades and Orion. Those are clusters of stars. Mm -hmm. He turns darkness into morning and day into night. He draws up water from the oceans and pours it down as rain on the land. 
The Lord is his name. Good God Almighty. With blinding speed and power, he destroys the strong, crushing all their defenses. How you hate honest judges. Mm -mm. How you despise people who tell the truth. Sounds like politicians today. Mm -hmm. You trample the poor, stealing their grain through taxes and unfair rent. Mm -hmm. Therefore, though you build beautiful stone houses, you will never mm -hmm. live in them. Though you plant lush vineyards, you will never drink wine from them. For I know the vast number of your sins and the depth of your rebellions. Mm -hmm. You oppress good people by taking bribes and deprive the poor of justice in the courts. Hmm. So those who are smart, keep their mouths shut, for it is an evil name. Turn. Do what is good and run from evil. What did, what did I say? Right. For it is an evil time. I didn't say time. No. Okay, verse 13. So those who are smart, keep their mouths shut, for it is an evil time. I guess when I got to keep your mouth shut, <laughs> I, I stopped. Amen. <laughs> Do what is good and run from evil so that you may live. Yeah. Then the Lord God of heaven's armies will be your helper just as you have claimed. Okay. Now, what is the verse? Is it a verse of encouragement or a verse of rebuke? Encouragement. Oh, oh Lord. Rebuke. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Encouragement. You still say it's encouragement. It's a verse of rebuke. Oh, Hearing all of that, because he's saying, I was, um, I'm going to send a thousand yeah. of you all to battle, and only a hundred going to come back. And if I send a hundred in the battle, only ten of you going to come back. Yeah. Okay. And he's going out listing all the things. You you, you all have left me. Mm -hmm. Is what he's I saying. I said encouragement because of just, just that one verse. Yeah, yeah, that one verse, it, 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 it could be encouragement only if they come back. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a verse of rebuke mm -hmm. because right now they're not with the Lord. Oh, they following okay. other gods and they mistreat people they and they doing all kind of stuff. And he's saying, "Come yeah. back to me and live." Oh, okay. Yeah. And even the fact said. that he starts up saying, "Listening to this funeral song." This funeral there's, song. There's death. It's basically death. because they are. Thank you. Yeah. I just I just picked the subject called for repentance. Yeah, you said rebuke it. Now see that I got up here rebuke, but then it's like it's. I thought it was encouragement first, just because he encouraged. He's telling you to do yeah, something. That's that what that I thought of, with that. Right. With that one verse. So now, sister, so can you see why I picked that mm -hmm. verse? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it could go either way, mm -hmm. right? Um, but he he's telling me, uh, God bless you, sister uh, Cheryl Phillips Hollingsworth. The God bless you for joining us this evening. So y'all see. It's a verse of rebuke because they had left God. the Lord following other gods and doing whatever they want to do. And he said, come back to me and live. Okay. And it sounds just like today, Bishop. Mm -hmm. it sounds just like, just today. like today. Do what is good and run from evil so that you may live. So it's it's encouraging, but it's a rebuke. Y'all yeah. need to come on back. Really rebuke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if you don't, you're going to die in this funeral song I'm singing. <laughs> Amen. I got another question. Here's here, Before I ask the question, here's why we need to get it in context. And we've used this. John 7 is my favorite. Because we'll go trying to encourage somebody. And because we want to encourage them when they're going through something. And we'll sling that verse at them alone. And because we interpreted it to be a verse of encouragement, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm trying to encourage Deacon Lorenzo. And I'll sling that verse at him. What have I just done? Take a verse that's context. meant for rebuke, I'm trying to encourage him with it, and it ain't going to do what I intended for it to do because that's not what it was for. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. 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 So therefore, you hurting people instead of helping them. Y'all don't slang verse. Now, if you use a verse in the context, and you can use a verse in context, you can. So if you use a verse in context, it'll have power. And you could sling that verse. But, well, you won't sling it. You will offer it up. As a rebuke. So you know what? You need to come back. Y'all with me? So I got another question for y'all. Mm -hmm. It says, 
Uh, thank you, Pastor uh, Charmita. She said misinterpretation of the script. That's exactly what happens. And uh, we'll start churches or denominations based on misinterpretation of scripture. It's a shame before God. All right, so another question. It says, then the Lord God of heaven's armies will be your helper. What is heaven's armies? You can answer it. Angels. Angels. Amen. And we won't go around singing, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. That ain't what it means. You will be. But you ain't now. We struggling. Yes, Lord. And we got to fight with people that know everything. So be like Tim, uh, Paul told Timothy, don't fight with them. Y'all got me? Yes, sir. That was a good one. That was a, that was a, really that was a good, good one. So principle one, remember that context rules and be like Pastor Sharmita. That's misinterpretation of scripture, which has no power uh, because it is misused. Ah, Pastor Sharmita said, I've seen that song, Bishop. I do too. That's why I know it. <laughs> Amen. Um, and it's okay to sing that because we are down here. In the army of the Lord. But the army of but what he's talking about is the angels. Okay. Amen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we can sing that song, Pastor. We are um a, a soldier. And that's what Paul told Timothy. Be a good soldier. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, we are, but but we gotta know when he and, and look at it. Heavens and armies is in capital. Well, the first letter is caps. What that tell you? Amen. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of things that was very loaded, and there's a lot that we can uh, glean from that. Okay. So part one. Um, let me go ask that, y'all. I'm sorry. Remember that context rules. Principle two. Always seek the full counsel of the Word of God. Always. Seek the full counsel of the word of God. And I know we ain't going to get past principle two tonight because we got some verses to hit. Um, when you know God's word thoroughly, you will not accept a teaching simply because someone has used one or two isolated verses to support that teaching. Mm -hmm. Those verses could have been taken out of context and nine times out of ten they are. Or other important passages might have been overlooked or ignored. Passages that might have led to a different understanding. As you read the Bible regularly, and what I'm reading now is in italics to show its importance. As you read the Bible regularly and extensively and become more familiar with the whole counsel of God's word, you will be able to discern whether a teaching is biblical or not. John 15, verse 7. John 15, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh. John 15, verse 7. Oh boy. John 15, verse 7. <laughs> Pastor, we hitting on something tonight, right? John 15, verse 7. John 15, verse 7. Pastor Charmita, I wish you was in the building. I'll pull you up here to read this one. Amen. Um my my classmate and my brother is watching is watching uh, George Strickland. Man, good to see you. Hang on for a few minutes. We're gonna be out of here in a few, but um, it's always good to see you, man. All right, y'all there? John fifteen verse seven. All right, here we go. Now here here again now, as you read the Bible regularly and extensively and become more familiar with the whole counsel 
um, of God's word, you will be able to discern whether teaching is biblical or not. All right. So here we go. Verse 7. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. How many times have you had people tell you that? Oh, all the time. Mm -hmm. Lots of times. Yeah. Was it biblical or was it not? Not. Why you say that, Caleb? Yes. What would make it because biblical? Because they're not God. Yeah. Oh, my God. You all heard what she just said. So what would make it biblical? Yeah, like, and she said, because they're not God. Mm -hmm. And it's another reason. Why? What do y'all see? God can only make things happen for sure, for sure. It's in red, so God else. spoke it, so. Yeah. What else do y'all see? And, and and I know some of y'all took it before. Go ahead and share it. You can. I'll tell you when not to answer that because you're ruining it for somebody else, but this ain't one of them. So if, let, let's say it's a genius. All right? So, and I'm looking for Pastor Sharmita to say something if she wants to. But. Is one word that makes me okay. If you remain in me and my words remain in you. All right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. Well, you, you said if my words remain in you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But people will tell you that. Whether they know you you remaining in the word or not, mm -hmm. people say that, and it, it may right. not necessarily be true. Yeah. So yeah, y'all yeah, see now y'all hitting mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so I'm gonna hit another verse that's gonna help us. Mm -hmm. You know, understand this, and we are gonna get the whole count the whole council. This is where we're going, right? So, yeah. um, Pastor Sharmita said it's not completely biblical, mm -hmm. and she said mm -hmm. the word if. Mm. That's a big mm. word. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. So yeah, but King James is altogether different. It yes, is. it is. Right. And it makes it, 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 read, read King James, please. It makes him sound like a genie in a bottle, basically. <laughs> right? <laughs> Doesn't it? Oh Lord. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Okay. And he using the word. Here's abide. where we want to. We 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 want to. We like fast food. Why is it fast food? Because we want it now. Mm -hmm. So we miss out on, but if you remain in me and my words remain in you, I, I don't want that because he told me something else I don't mm -hmm. like. Okay, but you can ask for anything you want and, you, and it'll be great. That's what we hang on to. That's what we tell yeah, people. That's what mm -hmm. Am I right? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, so Pastor Charmita, you're right. Let's look at something else that's going to help us a little more here. First John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. And we're going to go to James too. James is going to tell us something. 1 John, 1 John chapter 5. Well, I, John. Right before Revelation. Right, y'all? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's what they said when we were drawing up in church. They'd be like, I, John. 1 John. Right after Jude. Then we got 1 John. Pastor Sharmita said, we want to ask without the conditions for receiving. Mm -hmm. Right. If you remain in me and my words abide in you, that you are exactly right. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Is it before Jude? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's before Jude. Sorry, y'all. After 2 Peter. Mm -hmm. After 2 Peter. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. Amen. Mm -hmm. So when we get to James, James just get, Pastor James just lays it out. He he ain't got no tact with him. He, James comes right out and just tells you he ain't got no patience, right? Mm -hmm. So y'all there? Yes, we, got, we got Mother Ann still looking. We gonna wait for you, babe. Don't worry. All right. Thank you. Yeah, keep going. You getting there? We ain't gonna leave you. Don't even worry about it. Keep going. If you go back to Revelation and back up, mm -hmm. then you'll hit it quicker. Mm -hmm. Amen. Y'all 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 mind waiting as she gets there? Because I we, we all like to go to the train station at the same time. Mm -hmm. Then that means we'll arrive at the same time. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, you get there. You get there. Okay, there you go, first John. 
First John. Okay. There you there? Mm -hmm. First John chapter 5. All right? Verse 14. And then um, at, at before verse 13, it says conclusion, which begins a paragraph theme. All right. You got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's what he says. And we are confident that he hears us when it, whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. We got Marlon Jones watching us. God bless you. All right, glad to have you. Can I read that one more time? Yes, ma'am. Um, but that verse I was trying to remember last Sunday. Okay. About uh, if you see and somebody commits sin, that that's right. That, that's that's verse sixteen. My mom couldn't find it. Yeah. You got a treat, Sunday. <laughs> it's not this, but it's something similar. All right. Um, so yeah, you got a treat, Sunday. Okay. okay, so she was reading verse 16. It says, if you see a fellow believer sinning in a way that does, does not lead to, to death, you should pray and God will give that person life. But there is a sin that leads to death, and I'm not saying you should pray for those who commit it. Um, and he goes to tell you what that is. But verse 14, and we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything. What's the key? That pleases Please. him. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Mm -hmm. Not that pleases yeah, you. Because yeah. when we pray, what we ask for? Stuff, uh, stuff that pleases us. Uh, yeah. And if it doesn't please God, he's not going to do it. And then we get mad at God. <laughs> God will give us the desires of our hearts. He will give us what to desire. Is what Pastor Sharmita said. Praise the Lord. One more, y'all. James. Go, we're going to backpedal um, Mother Anne. We go back pedal to John. James. I mean James. Sorry, <laughs> we go back too far. We go to John. Uh, so right before, um, Peter is James, Pastor James, chapter four, verse three. Right after Hebrews. Right after Hebrews. Mm -hmm. And right before First Peter. And this is going to lay it all out for us. So now James is just going to cut to the core and just tell us real quick. Mm -hmm. So matter of fact, y'all, it's verse 3 that we're going. Can we go back to verse 1? Mm -hmm. All right. I think now we need a little context. Because James tired of y'all. <laughs> Jamie is sick of y'all. I've been preaching to y'all every week for 15 years. Y'all still ain't got this. Mother Ann is there, I see. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. Chapter 4, verse 1. You got it, Caleb? Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, she does. She, she already looking for more stuff. Here we go. <laughs> so here's what James says. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Y'all know how it is. I've been praying and God ain't answered me yet. <laughs> what is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires, Pastor Charmita said? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. That's fleshly. Mm -hmm. That's worldly. Mm -hmm. And we start lying like, like I, I said before Bible study. What happened to the men? Where'd they go? These are the most irresponsible men and, and all they want to do is live up with some woman and not take no responsibility. And then look up at her for your meal. Hmm. Y'all ain't here with that. Yeah. You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. Mm -hmm. You're asking him for something else. So verse 3 now is going to sum it up for us. 
And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. Or as he says in King James, you ask amiss. Right? So, and even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Yes. Cut to the chase. Mm -hmm. James. James cuts to the quick. Mm -hmm. yep. Pastor Sharmita said, We think that is what we want, but if it's not his will, it's not his desire. Jesus even said, Nevertheless, not my will, but What's your will, Lord. Mm -hmm. yes, Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Nailing it again. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So we're going to cut it off right now. I've had quite a day. Just got through teaching for two hours, and I just did another hour. So when I go home, y'all, first thing going to happen is shoes going off. <laughs> Can we close with this? Saturate yourself in the Word of God. It is your safeguard against wrong doctrine. And there's a lot of wrong doctrine out there. But go with the word. But don't be like some of them who says that they're following doctrine or scripture. Yeah, pastor, you came in. We start at 630 because let me tell you something. You missed a minute of what I'll be doing up in here. <laughs> You'll miss something. So if you can, come back on at 630 next week. Amen. As we continue on. Um, pastor Sharmita says we got to go a little longer. Well. The rest of me here might shoot me if I did that, mm. but <laughs> but you know um, we we got to stick to what we do, and um, I don't want to overkill y'all. All right, so saturate saturate yourself in the Word of God. It is your safeguard against wrong doctrine, and even though um, some people are well intentioned in what they say biblically, if it's out of context, it's wrong. Doctrine. Wrong, wrong. <laughs> wrong, 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 wrong. Yes, sir. Praise mm -hmm. the praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, y'all. Great Bible study. Yes, we Enjoyed it thoroughly. You all are the best. Don't let nobody tell you different. Amen. Amen. So we will. Um, anybody's watching, Pastor Sharmita. That this includes you. If you want to hang with us, um, get, get, just send me a message, and I will get um, elect uh, Elder Linden. Elder now. You got that? Elder now. You got that? <laughs> so um, I'll get her to send you part two. And part part one if you want it. You know, so just let us know what you want. Okay? And um, we will go from there. So anybody else who wants a copy, message us. Call us. Whatever. We'll make sure that you get a copy of the syllabus that we're going over. Um, so it's quite a bit that we got to talk about in interpretation to make sure we're getting the word of God accurately uh, so that it has meaning. Amen. So she said, yes. Yep, that's right. That's right, Pastor. She is on it. All right. So um, y'all listen. See y'all next week. It's going to be a good one. Y'all hang on uh, for, I don't know, the diaconate or ministerial uh, folks will be on uh, to close us out with a prayer and a benediction. And we'll see y'all next week. I love you. And there's really nothing you can do about it. Until next week. God bless y'all. Give the Lord a hand clap for praise. Foot hurting. Word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Father God, we thank you for this awesome, awesome, awesome Bible study, Father God. And Father God, as we leave this place to worship, we pray right now for your traveling grace so we can each and every one can get home safe to our destination. Amen. Amen. For the benediction, may the words of my mouth, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, the meditation of my heart be acceptable within thy sight. Be acceptable within thy sight. O Lord, o Lord my, strength, my strength, my redeemer. My redeemer. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.